Welcome to Wonderland, the podcast where I go down the rabbit hole to research things you may be curious about. My name is Ami, and I'll be your guide on this trip to Wonderland. Hi there. I hope you all had a wonderful Thanksgiving and enjoyed all of the food, festivities, friends, and family. And maybe after your turkey high wore off, you got some shopping in? Because if there's one thing people associate with the day after Thanksgiving, it's shopping. Have you ever wondered why? I wonder. I wonder. I wonder. I wonder. I wonder. I wonder. Hmm, I wonder. I wonder. I wonder. The day after Thanksgiving is one of the biggest shopping days of the year, and people often call it by a specific name. What do people call the day after Thanksgiving? I don't know. <laughs> I know it's not Good Friday. <laughs> day after Thanksgiving. The day after Thanksgiving is normally something Friday. Um, Black Friday. Immediately I go to Black Friday. I don't know if there's an, an official name besides that, but Black Friday is what's popped in my head. We're going to go with that. Black Friday. Black Friday. <laughs> Black Friday. Black Friday. That's right. Most Americans are familiar with Black Friday. Uh, a commercialism shopping experience. It used to be the, the first day of the Christmas shopping season and uh, uh, everyone started celebrating by saying they were going to knock the doors off with huge deals and uh, got people once upon a time to show up and camp out overnight to uh, get their Christmas shopping done. But I feel like in recent years, it's been much more tailored online. I know the shop. I never go because I don't like crowds. <laughs> So I don't know. I pretty much don't pay attention to it. I think that's the day they have all the sales after Thanksgiving. Is it one of the largest shopping days of the year in preparation for Christmas? Exactly. A lot of things go on sale. Uh, Black Friday is the day that businesses basically set up for big sales after Thanksgiving for the start of the holiday buying time. Uh, Black Friday is a chance to get all the shopping deals in that you can. Um, everything's rock bottom prices and, uh, you know, people fight over the silliest of things. Just get everybody in that shopping mode. Every, get everybody in the, I mean, it doesn't really get me in the Christmas spirit, but it certainly gets you in that mode of spending some money and buying stuff. The big shopping day is definitely the most common usage of Black Friday, but did you know it's not the only usage? Back in 1869, two financiers and investors, James Fisk and Jay Gould, caused a global panic that was dubbed Black Friday. Due to a conspiracy to corner the gold market and force the prices of metal up on the New York Gold Exchange, Fisk and Gould formed something called the Gold Ring, along with President Grant's brother-in-law, Abel Corbin. This is a pretty interesting story full of political lobbying and deceit. I'll link additional information on this rabbit hole on the website, but basically, these schemers did some hardcore manipulation to make money on the exchange, and ultimately when Grant caught wind of their plot, he put the kibosh on it, despite receiving nearly $60,000 worth of gifts from the Gold Ring. He did this by releasing $4 million in gold back into the Treasury on Friday, September 24th. The crash caused financial devastation in the United States for months afterwards. In early 1869, Gould devised a way to corner the gold market, enlisting Fisk in his scheme, who contributed some $7 million, and Abel Corbin, a former Washington bureaucrat who just happened to be married to President Ulysses S. Grant's sister. With gold prices now topping $145 a unit, on September 24, 1869, now known as Black Friday, Grant ordered the Treasury Department to sell $4 million in gold reserves, sending not only gold prices, but Wall Street stock prices in general into a precipitous downward tailspin, bankrupting or severely damaging many of Wall Street's most venerable investment houses. And while a gold conspiracy in the 1800s is really interesting, it's not what we think of when we say Black Friday. So when was the first Black Friday? That one's got to be super recent. I know we were saying on the Thanksgiving one that that was probably in the last 70 years. I feel like Black Friday is probably like circa 2000 or something. Um, I, I would have to guess uh, 
sometime in the early 1970s. I have no idea. So it's got to be recent because I don't remember it from my youth. So I'm going to say like 90, 98, something like that, 99. The earliest known use of Black Friday in relation to the Friday after Thanksgiving wasn't actually about shopping either. A journal called Factory Management and Maintenance referred to the Friday after Thanksgiving as quote-unquote Black Friday in a November 1951 edition of the journal and again in 1952. But it was actually referring to the practice of workers calling out sick Friday after Thanksgiving to enjoy a four-day weekend. So why do we call the shopping day Black Friday? I don't really know. I guess for, I don't know, commercial reasons so that they can advertise sales, but I don't know why they chose Black Friday yeah. versus it being day after Thanksgiving day. I, I don't really have any idea. I have no idea. I would have to guess because there were so many injuries at some point during the first time that they, the first time that the sa- these types of sales went on after Thanksgiving, I, the injuries because of mass crowds going in for these really low prices on items. <laughs> I, I really don't know the name, but I'm, I'm going to guess because uh, the amount of people that get trampled at the department stores. That's a fantastic question. Probably something to do with uh, knocking down prices or you know taking the lights out or something. I have no idea, though. Using Black Friday to describe the busiest shopping and traffic day of the year can be traced back to Philadelphia and Rochester in the mid-1950s. Police in the area used the terms Black Friday and Black Saturday to describe the crowds and traffic congestion that went hand in hand with the start of the Christmas shopping season. But for them, with the added influx of people coming into the city for the Army-Navy football game, the cops were not allowed to take either of those days off, and many were reported to be required to work longer shifts than usual. In addition to the bigger crowds, 'er ne'er-do-wells also took advantage of the situation and shoplifting instances increased. City merchants didn't love the negative connotation of the phrase, which had begun to be widely used in the area and even tried to rebrand it as Big Friday instead with no luck. Retailers and workers didn't like the negative connotation of the term Black Friday and even tried to rebrand it as Big Friday but that didn't catch on. The phrase began to slowly spread, with the New York Times using the language in November 1975. But according to the Philadelphia Inquirer in 1985, retailers in Cincinnati and Los Angeles were still unaware of the term used to describe the day. But by the end of the 80s, the phrase had gained national attention. And this is when the often quoted alternate explanation for why it's called Black Friday was born. Much as retailers in Philly didn't like the negative undertone of Black Friday, other retailers across the nation also disliked the connotation around the phrase. Black Friday is a term that's been in use for quite a long time to refer generally to negative events that happen to fall on a Friday. That's Ben Zimmer. He's a language columnist for The Wall Street Journal. As it's told, when the phrase began to spread nationwide, Some merchants found the term used to describe one of the most important shopping days of the year derisive and offered up an alternate reason for calling it Black Friday. They suggested that retailers typically operated at a financial loss from January to November, and profits began being turned during the Christmas shopping season, starting with the day after Thanksgiving. Accounting books often reflected negative amounts in red ink and positive in black, So in this explanation, the Friday after Thanksgiving is when the retailer would begin operating for a profit, or in the black. As retailers accepted this positive version of Black Friday, they started to lean into it with special one-day sales and Black Friday promotions. Clear your calendars, chug that coffee, and wake the kids, because this Friday is Black Friday at Mega Mart. Black Friday. It's the biggest shopping day of the year, and we're giving you incredible savings with Mega Mart's 12-Minute Madness. This is the shortest, craziest sale in retail history. You have just 12 minutes to rush in and grab all the deals you can carry. It's going to be a savings stampede. Savings stampede. Doorbuster specials like iPads for $39. 3D television for $71, and a secret unpublished Harry Potter novel, Harry Potter and the Treacherous Crawl Space, is available for only six bucks. And there's only seven left, so line up early because we're starting at 4 a.m. Crack it up. This version stuck, and the bleak origins out of Philadelphia were largely forgotten.
And since I know some folks mention the injuries on Black Friday as a potential reason for the moniker, I'm going to go on a little side trip here to talk about the gruesome side of the shopping day. Black Friday-related incidents, including injury and death, are not just the stuff of urban legends. In fact, there's even a website, blackfridaydeathcount.com, that has been tracking deaths and injuries related to the shopping event since 2006. These events range from people being pepper sprayed. In America, shoppers trying to grab a bargain in the sales have been attacked with pepper spray. Police in Los Angeles are looking for a woman they believe targeted the crowd so that she could get first dibs on an Xbox at Walmart. It's thought up to 20 people were injured. To employees being trampled to death by the crowds. Well, we're still waiting to, for the uh, identification of the 34-year-old part-time sales clerk who was killed here at this Walmart. Police say what happened here this morning was utter chaos. They call it a stampede. It was about 2,000 people lining up outside the store just before 5 o'clock this morning when the store was supposed to open. Some of the folks were chanting, open up, open up. But apparently the, the crew of the store didn't open the doors fast enough. And at one point, the crowd surged forward and literally pushed down the huge glass and aluminum doors. The doors knocked down this 34-year-old sales clerk, and while he lay on the ground, as you said, hundreds of people trampled over him. Some of his colleagues on the staff of Walmart rushed to his aid, but even they were getting knocked around by the crowd. And, and the final insult of all of this, when police arrived on the scene and were trying to administer CPR to this man, they too were getting getting knocked around by the crowd that was surging in to try and uh, get the sales that were happening at that early point in the day. To shoppers being shot, fighting over a parking space. At least four people were shot across the country during Black Friday sales, including a Walmart customer who died in a fight over a parking space. In Reno, a Walmart shopper was shot and killed just minutes after Black Friday doorbusters began on Thursday night. Officials say the gunman and his victim were fighting over a parking spot. The site's current count is 125 injuries and 17 deaths, with the last report being in 2021. Around 70% of the incidents occurred inside the retail stores where tensions were sometimes high due to the limited stock of big ticket items and the huge crowds. So why is the day after Thanksgiving such a busy shopping day? We touched on it a little in the Thanksgiving episode when we discussed how while we now see Christmas advertised along, say, Halloween, in the 40s and 50s, that just wasn't the case. Retailers waited until after Thanksgiving to gear up for Christmas, which is in part where the whole Franksgiving debacle came in. And since retailers weren't offering Christmas sales until after Thanksgiving, people didn't shop for Christmas until then either. So have you ever gone shopping on Black Friday? I used to do it regularly, and I'm going to blame it on my sisters in law because they always wanted me to get up at the crack of dawn and go. And I did it, but now I don't do it anymore, except now my daughters want to do it. And so I'm sort of obligated. I don't believe I have. <laughs> but, uh, I did have to buy some radio equipment for a broadcast once on a Black Friday, and that was a nightmare. I, I have. I hate to admit it, but uh, it actually used to be a thing that we did uh, in my later years of high school. Um, we would make it a goal to get to as many places as we could and only get the free things. We would never actually, like, buy stuff, but we would buy the bare minimum if we had to get, like, a free ornament or something like that. But our goal was to get as many free things as we could uh, from the amount of department stores that we could stop at. Um, but really never actual Black, uh, Black Friday shopping. Around 130.7 million shoppers, or one out of every three Americans, are planning to shop on Black Friday this year, according to data from the National Retail Federation. And this number has been in steady decline since before the COVID-19 pandemic. This is in part due to online shopping taking off and in part due to retailers attempting to take the burden off of a single day and offer competitive pricing starting as early as October with Amazon Prime Day and November and other retailers. Black Friday shopping shifted from being one-day sales to sales on Friday and Saturday, to some stores opening on Thanksgiving and starting sales on Thursday, to the introduction of week-long sales leading up to Black Friday, and ultimately, month-long sales. But when it was a special one-day only focused sale, it began an interesting tradition for some, camping out for that limited deal. I mentioned before that I worked in retail for 13 years. I happened to work at a big box electronics retailer, 
and we would all work late on Wednesday night, ensuring that the queues were ready, product was placed and priced, and that everything was good to go for when we opened in the wee hours of Friday morning. And when we left, usually near midnight on Wednesday before Thanksgiving, there would inevitably already be people in line. Some were just sitting there in chairs. They'd work in shifts with another family member to keep their spot. Some set up literal tents on the sidewalk and slept out there Wednesday night and Thursday night. We had people literally deep fry turkeys in the parking lot and host their Thanksgiving dinners on folding tables and camp chairs right in front of the store. People have already started camping out in the tailgate sponsored by Four Loco, America's premier hillbilly and solo fuel. If you show up too late, you will be humiliated. I'm ready to do whatever it takes to get the 12, 5, 12, finish in the flesh as a scrapbook can get. I've steeled myself, my state's in order, and I've made peace with my God and those around me, so I'll get the 12 by 12, finish in the flesh as a scrapbook can get. Just do wait. Whoa, what a day for shopping. So have you ever camped out? Uh, I have not done the, like, camp out overnight thing. Um, no, absolutely not. No. So even if you're not willing to literally camp out for something, have you ever stood in line for hours on Black Friday? Uh, I wouldn't say hours. Like, when, when I was talking about with the... Uh, going to get free stuff. We There was definitely some line standing, but maybe 20, 30 minutes, uh, never hours. Well, I've done the whole showed up at the mall at 6 a.m. in the morning and literally shopped all day long <laughs> and done, uh, like I said, I used to go with my, my sister. So we, when our kids were little, we would go, all of us together, go to Toys R Us. And that way we could all shop for each other, the nieces and the nephews and stuff, and we would all be there. So uh, but no, I've never waited in line because of some specific thing that was on sale or, uh, you know, never fought Not trying over to get like a anything. $50 TV mm. or... No, no, nothing like that. Uh, yeah, it ended up being about like an hour 15 that I was at the local Best Buy the one time I went. How about you? Oh, you ever absolutely shopped on not. <laughs> absolutely not. It's, it's like my a... version of HE double hockey sticks. <laughs> Yes, I was guilted. Just so, just so we understand, I was guilted into doing these yeah. things. So. Again, I worked in a very busy big box electronics store, so I've witnessed people standing in line outside just to get into the store, and then once they were in, standing in line again to check out with their items. The New York Times ran an interesting piece in 2017 where they interviewed J. Jeffrey Inman, the then president of the Society for Consumer Psychology, who said that families treat the hours-long experience as a bonding ritual and cherished tradition. He went on to say that for those people, it wasn't a chore to stand in line for hours. He also mentioned that there's a layer of competition to it. Richard Larson, a professor at MIT who studies line behaviors, added that the gotta have it atmosphere amplifies excitement and makes the wait seem shorter. The limited supply of discounted merchandise can also inspire the same mentality that is common when there's a shortage of any other supply. Some people actually may gravitate toward longer lines so they can feel a greater sense of accomplishment once they finally make a purchase. Professor Larson is quoted as saying that, people's willingness to wait is, in some sense, proportional to the perceived value of whatever they're trying to acquire. Even if they don't know what the line is for, they reason that whatever's at the end of it must be fantastically valuable. Interestingly, no one that I interviewed for this episode actually goes Black Friday shopping, so I wasn't able to gain insight as to what they perceive to be valuable enough to stand in line for. But in my experience as a retail worker, I can tell you that I have asked that question to literally hundreds of people in my lifetime. Obviously, my insights are a touch skewed because I worked at an electronics store, so everyone was in line for electronics. We would typically have a big screen TV that would be offered at some insanely low price that would be the number one thing that people were there for. After that, usually some entry level but incredibly inexpensive laptop. In my last few years with the company, the PlayStation 4 and an Xbox One had come out, so we also typically had a limited stock of gaming systems that were hard to come by those days. Those are the items that people who got there early were there for. As the day wore on, those shoppers were replaced by people trying to get discounts on video games, DVDs, CDs, and accessories. Some people, unfortunately, were literally there to purchase the items with the intent of reselling them for a profit. But for others, the deals offered during Black Friday and the weekend after were the only way they could afford a coveted item on their kids' Christmas list. But even before electronics became such a big reason to stand in line, many children's toys have caused similar chaos. Back in 1983, it was the Cabbage Patch Kids. Can I have two? Just one for customer. The customers were standing in front of this store at 7 o'clock this morning. 
The store didn't open until nine, and only a few Cabbage Patch dolls were going on sale. And then the race was on. Otherwise dignified, calm, mannerly parents broke into a sprint. I miss work. I'm late for work to get this for my little girl. You did not get a Cabbage Patch doll this morning. No, I did not. How badly do you want one? Very, very badly. This is what all the fuss is about. Why are full-grown adults fighting over these? Well, here's one reason. I want to get it. Side note, there's a documentary on this called Billion Dollar Babies that just came out today and looks very interesting. I'll link the trailer on the website. In 1988, it was the Nintendo Entertainment System. Can you be the one to witness the birth of the incredible Nintendo Entertainment System? The one to play with Rob, the extraordinary video robot, batteries not included. He helps you tackle even the toughest challenge. Will you be the first to raise the incredibly accurate Zapper and play games like Duck Hunt or action-packed Hogan's Alley and high-flying Kung Fu, each sold separately? Will you be the one to experience the Nintendo Entertainment System? Comes with Rob, Zapper, Control two controllers, Gyromite, and Duck Hunt. The Beanie Baby Boom came in 1995. These are the feet. This craze is just, it's scary. Of Beanie. They're just cute. Crazed. That's the new baddie. Collectors. You ready? They've been waiting hours for Coach House gift store to open. I like the duck. What we got? Two raccoons, two skunks, and two spiders. I see you have to admit they're cute. Here's a quick lesson on this beanie craze. A company called Ty makes them, releases them with different names. They're all named after something, an animal, an animal, basically. They haven't done like funguses. Then retires them one at a time. There's snort, seaweed, jabber, jake. When they're first released, you can get them for about five to seven dollars. Once they retire, the value goes up. In like two years, they're worth like $245 and stuff. He's worth about $4,000. 1998 brought forth the Furby frenzy. And finally, you're almost certainly going to be seeing a lot of this little guy soon. He's a Furby, one of just a couple in the country, but he's predicted to be in huge demand in the run-up to Christmas. Bratz dolls were so coveted in 2001 that it was an item at the center of one of the Black Friday incidents. Make your fashion move. Don't fear eyes. And the list goes on. So, what are you doing this year on the Friday after Thanksgiving? Probably the same old thing I do almost every day. Uh, I am pretty sure I'm just chilling in a cabin with uh, my girlfriend and her family. Um. I would assume that I'm going to probably be with family. I don't have any plans. Probably going to move my daughter's Black Friday. <laughs> um, not leaving my house. That that's become my tradition now. Is Black Friday. I avoid leaving my house for any reason whatsoever. Oh, I mean, if I do shop, it's online. I'm not. I'm not. Yeah. I'm not getting out there amongst the crazies. For most people that I spoke with, leaving the house to go shopping is definitely not in their plans. And why would you brave the crowds when there are so many great deals online? Who doesn't want to shop while binging Hallmark movies on their couch? And that is a mentality that led to something called Cyber Monday. And it's been so successful that we see online retailers trying to uh, spin off Black Friday into other shopping days. So there's Cyber Monday, for instance. Have you ever heard of Cyber Monday? Cyber Monday is where electronics, right? like computers and like TV, the, the electronics that are entertainment associated, have the big sales after Black Friday. It, it's normally the Monday after Black Friday. Okay, that's the day that uh, businesses online have big sales. And again, you're supposed to have uh, savings. It may be the Monday after the Thursday that Thanksgiving is on. Cyber Monday is like online Black Friday. <laughs> but they couldn't take Black Friday because it was already taken. Right. So, and it's a Monday. Right. <laughs> Black Monday. So. Monday after? It's a Monday after Black Friday, after I believe. Cyber Monday is the Monday, the weekend, after the weekend of Thanksgiving. Is this making sense? Yeah. That, so you got Thursday, Thanksgiving, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, that Monday um, is Cyber Monday. Um, so it, it's a, 
massive discounts online for electronics. Um, all any and all electronics you think of are usually pretty well discounted online. The National Retail Federation coined the term Cyber Monday in 2005. In the early 2000s, online shopping was becoming more and more common, but those Thanksgiving weekend sales were still largely an in-person event. Online retailers looked to capitalize on the shopping frenzy and offered a Black Friday type event with massive sales and markdowns for one day only on the Monday following Thanksgiving. There was success in this plan and Cyber Monday is the largest online spending day of the year with Cyber Monday sales in 2022 totaling around $11.3 billion, the largest in U.S. history to date. Interestingly, part of the reason why it's Monday and not the weekend is because in the early days of online shopping, not everyone had a computer at home, and smartphones certainly weren't what they are now. So when people returned to work after the holiday weekend, they'd often browse online-only retailers for deals. Stores turn their attention to Cyber Monday for yet another round of discounts. That had some people wondering how the Monday after Thanksgiving became designated as Cyber Monday. Some sites claim it was inspired by office workers not exactly working. So let's verify. Did Cyber Monday get its start because people shopped online at work? Our sources are the National Retail Federation and department store historian Michael Lisicki. Verify traced the first reference of Cyber Monday to a 2005 press release from the National Retail Federation. It coined the term because retailers were beginning to see an increase in online sales on the Monday after Thanksgiving. The NRF noted at the time that consumers often had faster internet at work than home. So to speed up their holiday shopping, workers would squeeze in some online shopping during the workday. Lasicki tells Verify that retailers also saw Cyber Monday as an opportunity to entice more people to shop online instead of in-store by luring them in with additional deals. So, yes, Cyber Monday did get its start because people shopped online at work. As the lines between these shopping events have blurred with retailers, both brick and mortar and online extending the shopping sales over longer periods of time, both Black Friday and Cyber Monday have continued to see much success, as well as other days throughout the month, creating what experts have now simply coined Black November. Black Friday as we know it may never be the same. Is Black Friday dead? Black Friday is not dead, it's just changing a lot. Kristen Gall is the president of Rakuten Rewards, a cashback app that partners with thousands of retailers. Black Friday is supposed to be the Friday after Thanksgiving. Why are we seeing deals now? Consumer shopping has changed significantly. A lot fewer of us are willing to go to the stores on Black Friday and battle people and use our elbows. That retailers are more willing to allow us to shop over a longer period of time. Whether you're the kind of person to gather the ads and track down the best deals in the store, or the kind to cozy up in your jammies and hit a bunch of websites, the holiday shopping season has begun. Thank you for taking the time away from your holiday shopping to spend some time with me. Or maybe you're listening to me while you're shopping. Don't forget, Welcome to Wonderland merch makes a great present for the curious person in your life. Just kidding, I don't have merch, but I do have stickers. Email me your mailing address if you want one and I'll stick it in the mail. As always, thank you so much for joining me on this trip to Wonderland. And until next time, be safe, be kind, and stay curious. The Welcome to Wonderland podcast is copyrighted by Amy Bland and is part of Big Media. This podcast is recorded in the podcast studio at GOT Sound Studio in Lexington, South Carolina. But this episode was recorded in the Welcome to Wonderland recording closet. Any thoughts or opinions expressed as part of this production are those of the hostess unless otherwise indicated. Subscribe to this podcast wherever you get your podcasts. Please follow, like, and share this podcast. Find us on Facebook at Welcome to Wonderland, the podcast, and on X, the app formerly known as Twitter at Wonderland underscore pod. Check out behind the scenes moments and other videos on TikTok at Wonderland pod. And finally, check out pictures, additional information, and go further down the rabbit hole on our website at www.wtwlpod.com. To submit corrections, additional information, or request for episodes, please email the hostess at welcometowunderlandthepod at gmail.com. Back in 1869, two financiers... I'm gonna have to look that word up. I swear I do this every time. Like, I need to look a word up so I don't sound like an idiot. Let's see. How to pronounce... I feel like it's financier, but I want to say financier. It's like they say, life is a profiterole.
And death is a financier. 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 Financier.